Now we have a running servlet container, but it doesn't do anything. You can give it any request you want and it just throws an error page. What we want to do is be able to handle certain requests, right? You can have a specific request and say, okay, given this request, I want this piece of code to execute on the servlet container. How do you do that? You do that by adding a controller in Spring. A controller is basically a Java class that has certain annotations marked in it. This annotations let Spring know what is the URL that you're mapping it to and what should happen when the request comes to that URL. So there are two pieces of information that Spring needs to know and you're providing both of them in the class itself and the annotation of that class. So this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna create a class which acts as a controller, right? How does it act as a controller? We're gonna mark it with annotations. These annotations are gonna mark that as a controller and it also provides this information about what URL access needs to trigger that controller to execute. And then secondly, we're gonna write the method that needs to execute when that is triggered, right? When the URL is called, this is the method that needs to run. We're gonna write the method and we're gonna annotate it so that it maps to a URL. So let's do that next. Let's say I have a URL like this, localhost 8080 slash hello. When I access this URL, it's gonna give me the same error page again. But what I wanna do is have some kind of a valid response. I want it to say hi. When I say hello, I want the app to say hi back to me. So let's build that in this tutorial. What this involves is creating something called a controller. The web layer in a Spring Boot application leverages a Spring framework called Spring MVC. All right, Spring MVC is a child project of the whole Spring framework umbrella. And uh, what it does is lets you build server-side code which maps to URLs and provides responses. You can have the response be a REST API response, in which case it's just a JSON, or it can be a full HTML page. You can have a request map to a, you know, a JSP or an FTL response and have a full HTML page return. In our case, we're gonna be building a REST API. So we want the response to be just a simple JSON. In this case, actually just a simple string. When I say localhost 8080 slash hello, I want the response to be a simple string that says hi. I'm gonna start by creating a new class in SRC main Java. And I'm gonna call this hello controller. And uh, I'm gonna put this in the package called hello. I'm gonna explain why I use this package in a little bit. But the controller is hello controller. And the purpose of this controller is to map to a URL request at slash hello and return hi. So I'm gonna click finish. And this is gonna be an empty Java class. Now this is supposed to be a Spring controller. And like I told you, the way to make these Spring entities have a particular meaning is by annotating them. So that's the Spring framework knows that this is meant to be a controller. And in this particular case, we want hello controller to be a rest controller. So turns out there is an annotation in the Spring framework called at rest controller. And this is the annotation that you need to put on any class in order to make the class a REST controller. This annotation is from Spring MVC. So if I try to do the import, now here you see it says the import is from org Spring Framework Web, which means that this is a Spring MVC annotation. So this annotation marks this as a REST controller. And this is what you have to do. Any time you're building a controller, you're building a REST controller, just create a simple Java class and add this annotation called at rest controller. And this becomes a rest controller in Spring. Now, what does it mean? What does a class being a rest controller mean? It means that you can have methods in here in this class, which map to URL requests, right? You can have a request map to a particular method so that this method executes when the user makes a request to that URL. Okay, so let's say I have a simple method here which says public string say hi because this is what we want to do. We want to have a response which just says uh, hi. So I return the word hi. Now this method needs to be executed when the user makes a request to slash hello. We've already seen that. Now how do I tell the Spring framework that this method needs to be called when the slash hello URL is accessed? We want to have some kind of a request mapping to this method when a request is made. 
And turns out the way to do this is by another annotation. And the annotation is called at request mapping. Now at request mapping is another Spring MVC annotation, again from org Spring Framework Web. So I'm going to import that. Now this request mapping takes in a parameter, which is the URL that this method needs to map to. So in this case, it's slash hello. Now this line, this annotation tells the Spring Framework that whenever there is a request, an HTTP request to this application, add the URL slash hello, you want this method to be executed and this return value to be returned back, okay? There are, there's no HTTP method over here. Is it uh, applicable for all HTTP methods? What if I make a get request or a post request or a put request? Well, it turns out this way of mapping is only for a get, right? Because that's the default method. If you wanna map, other methods, then you have to explicitly mention it. But in this case, since we are doing a get request, this is all that it takes, okay? So you're basically having two annotations in this class. One is a rest controller to mark the class itself as a rest controller. It basically says, hey, Spring, this is a class that deals with providing HTTP responses to HTTP requests, which are rest requests and rest responses. And then the second annotation is this at request mapping, which says, hey, Spring, Whenever there is a request to slash hello, just execute this method and whatever I return, just return it back. Okay, so that's what this class does. So now that I have put this class in here, how do I plug this into the Spring Framework? Well, it turns out you don't have to do anything because the very fact of you putting this class in the class path means that the Spring Framework scans it and it knows that this is what needs to happen. When the Spring Framework starts up, it basically does a class path scan. I remember I talked about that. So when the class path scan happens, what it's doing is basically looking at all these classes and seeing if there are annotations like these. If it finds an annotation, it registers it. So in this case, Spring, when it starts up, finds this class, and it finds that this class has two annotations. One is the rest controller. It says, okay, I got this, this is the rest controller. And then it finds this annotation which says, okay, I got it. Whenever there's a request, I need to remember to call this method. So it registers it and then the application is started up. So when the actual request comes in, say slash hello, Spring looks at its notes and says, okay, this is the method that I need to call, executes it, and then takes the return and returns it back, right? So you don't have to do anything else. So I'm gonna click the play button so that this starts up. And now if I access this URL, I'm gonna get hi back. So what Spring does is it executes the method and puts in the return value as the response. So this is all you had to do to create a controller. What we did was map a request to a response in Spring Boot using the Spring MVC annotations.